Good afternoon. This is David Beata, the CEO here at Beata Home Healthcare. Today is Friday, May 1st, and this is your CEO update. Not daily anymore, but two times a week, each Tuesday and Friday during this coronavirus pandemic. Today, we're going to cover some really, really important topics. Uh, as usual, um, some updates on the current situation uh, clinically, uh, as well as with uh, PPE and supplies, um, some important topics around masks, as well as an amazing story about one of our partners out in the community uh, that's helping us solve the mask uh, shortage problem. Um, first, I just want to turn it over to our Chief Clinical Officer, Nora Triola, who will share a bit of an update on what's happening out in the community with the pandemic, uh, as well as here inside of Bayala. Nora? Thank you, David. And again, it's a pleasure to be with you. Uh, to talk uh, about COVID-19, uh, the screen that David just brought up is a map of the United States and uh, it's from the CDC and it really talks about the areas across the country where we're seeing uh, outbreaks of COVID-19. The darker colors indicate the areas where we have more, more cases and a more community spread. And for the first time, I think uh, we've... Uh, We've gone where we didn't believe we would with uh, over a million individuals across our country ex COVID positive. Um, and so, you know, we, we recognize obviously the seriousness of, the, of this and uh, last uh, time we were together, I talked about how that looked in, in Bayada and we continue to serve multiple clients. Over 400 clients are currently on service that are COVID positive. And through your efforts, we have over, you know, 1,400 clinicians caring for those. And we wouldn't be able to do it without the support that the, cl that the clinicians get from the other members of the, the office team. So there's a whole host of you that are out there servicing uh, those COVID positive clients. And you truly are our heroes on the home front. We just want to recognize you and say thank you for the hard work you're doing. Because what we're seeing across the country, we're certainly seeing. Uh, at home here at Bayada. Nora, I just wanna, I wanna reemphasize that number. It's an amazing one. The Bayada heroes on the home front are Bayada nurses, home health aides, therapists, social workers, and other clinicians. Over 1,400 Bayada heroes have been inside the homes of COVID positive clients during this pandemic, which is just an incredible number and just uh, really inspiring. Uh, because it's been in the face of incredible adversity, whether it's um, confusion, uncertainty, uh, un, you know, changing protocol around uh, PPE. This is like day to day. It's, it's um, incredible to watch these 1,400 clinicians rise to the occasion. But also, I also want to, um, you know, re-recognize the other 28,000 Bayada clinicians who are also heroes. They may not necessarily have been inside the home of a, of a COVID client, but these are truly unique times. And every single one of you is doing an amazing job. It's incredible to watch every day. Thank you. Eric, I wanna turn it over to you to share a little bit about our recent survey that many of those in the audience have completed um, and provided feedback. Do you wanna tell us a little bit about it? Sure, thank you, David. It's an honor and privilege to be here. And I wanna express my gratitude and thank you to all of our employees for their tireless efforts in supporting each other, our fellow employees and our clients during this pandemic emergency crisis of COVID-19. And we launched this COVID-19 Keep in Touch survey just uh, last week uh, to make sure that you have your voices heard, that we are actively listening so that your thoughts, your concerns, your fears, uh, your joys and uh, things that we might be doing well so we can keep doing it and other things that we can do to better support you during this crisis. So thank you for coming out and responding. We've had close to 6,000 responses already and we encourage you to keep on taking this. Uh, the initial major themes that have come up uh, that we want to highlight and, and share, those are protection. We're hearing a lot of feedback around just ensure that I am protected. I am out here on the front lines. And that comes in the form of protecting me with proper supplies, proper information, proper uh, sick leave if I do get sick. Um, and so 
protection, compensation, ensuring that we can properly support you. A lot of conversations around hazard pay and making sure I'm not impacted by pay cuts, which could hurt me and my family, and communication transparency. Share with me what is going on with our organization, what are we doing to support all of our employees and clients. And so a lot of positive feedback too around the, the level of communication. And so we wanna keep piling and continuing to hear from you because communication is critical. So a couple quick action items. We do wanna see, this is a marathon, not a sprint. We wanna hear from you over time. Feel free to take it more than once every week because we wanna know how we're doing in response. So two things we wanna highlight this week on the protection theme is more PPE is coming. Our teams are actively supplying this inventory and, and pushing this inventory to our local service offices for quicker response times and access. So that is a big push this week. We're very excited about that and we hope you see that. Secondly, we have expanded our emergency uh, leave program uh, from what was up to originally 24 hours. We've now expanded it to 80 hours for field employees that are um, exposed on the, on the job with Bayada and need their require, required time off. And so we're excited about these developments and uh, we, we know it's just, just a step in the right direction. We have to do better, but um, we are committed to listening and responding and updating you on a, on a normal basis. So with that, please, thank you and keep on uh, taking the survey so we can listen to your thoughts. Thanks, Eric. And thanks for organizing the rapid response to the feedback we're getting. We want to make sure people know that we're listening and that we're doing something about it as much as we possibly can. Um, so keep, this, keep the feedback coming. Nora, I'm going to turn it back over to you to talk a little bit about the fabric mask. David, thank you. Um, so again, uh, we haven't talked about this in a while. Uh, but those fabric uh, face coverings or what we call our comfort masks should be now uh, an integral part of your uniform as you prepare to go care for our clients. Um, and again, just uh, remember that those are not part of your personal protective equipment as if you were preparing yourself for a client exposure, then you would go to your PPE, but your comfort mask is what prepares and keeps you from potentially infecting a client. So those masks should be worn uh, when you're in a home with a client. They should also be worn when you're interacting and uh, for say giving shift report to one of your colleagues. Um, make sure you know that we're still doing social distancing but that face covering is an important um, other additional a safeguard against you spreading virus. A little bit about those face masks. Make sure that they cover your nose and your mouth. Make sure that you are wearing them for the full entirety of that, that time that you are in the home. And that they are of a material that is tightly woven. The fabric does not have a lot of um, air spaces or holes in it, if you will. Um, we found through reports that the cotton material or material like that is easier to wear on the face and more durable. So just a couple of pointers about how um, those face masks are to be used. Our comfort masks, again, part of your normal uniform and just we thought a good reminder. Remember on the, on the website are the um, at a glance tools that will help you. Uh, you use these uh, for your reference and they're updated continually. So they're out there for you as you need them. That's great. Thanks, Nora. Thanks for that guidance. It's really important that this uh, comfort mask, probably more than we anticipated become part of pretty much every American's daily life. And thanks for providing clarity. On that note, I wanna uh, send you off uh, for the weekend with an amazing story about one of our community partners, Ryan's Case for Smiles. Uh, Gavin Kerr, who's one of our board members here at Bayada, uh, a longtime friend of Bayada, uh, a longtime executive in the healthcare industry, uh, and the parent uh, of a son who passed away after a battle with cancer. He and his wife, Cindy, years ago in, in their son Ryan's honor, started an organization called Ryan's Case for Smiles. Uh, this organization um, gathered and galvanized a network 
of volunteers to create pillowcases for, uh, for patients, children, at children's hospitals around the country. And during the pandemic, they realized that their skills and expertise in sewing pillowcases could be quickly uh, transitioned to sewing uh, cloth masks. And so we recently received a shipment from Ryan's Case for Smiles from uh, of over 3,000 of these masks, um, thanks to Gavin and Cindy and their incredible network of volunteers. So I wanna thank Ryan's Case for Smiles and um, really recognize that incredible partnership and the amazing work they're doing but also let you know that we have comfort masks. And so if you're having a hard time finding more, if you need them, um, you can get them from us here centrally. One of the many examples of things we're trying to do every day to improve access to the critical supplies that you need out there in the community. Thanks everyone. And we will see you next week.